Hi guys, this is Nutrix the Synth Guy, and today I'm going to talk about two things. First, I am happy I got these. Um, this actually pair of headphones was given to me by Roland about three, four years ago, and I've been using them since, and they sound really nice. I did a video about it, so up here if you want to watch it. But one of the cool things is you can actually match these. Uh, most people don't know this, this brand because it's... Vimoda. And Vimoda, well, the reason is the people don't know the brand because most people have whatever they want on the side. So you don't see the brand name. So that's a cool thing because it's custom. But it's for them, it's not a cool thing because you don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't know it's them. So, um, so that's one cool thing. But the second thing is that I got today my microphone I just bought because the problem I had two weeks ago, my old microphone just died on me. This, uh, this Audio-Technica, which was uh, affordable. It was a $50 microphone for mobile recording. It's, it's fairly efficient, but the problem was that it was broken, you know. Uh, it didn't work just because at one point this little cable here basically died on me. Which is the problem with everything that is too small and at one point uh, hanging on the hardware, the weight of everything made it so that it just stopped working. So that's a sad thing because it worked correctly. This was a uh, Audio Technica uh, Omni ATR3350, which is a I would say it's, it's a good microphone for what it does. It needs a battery inside it, some pieces. So it's not a bad thing. It works well for the price it is. Uh, if you're mobile, it's a good thing. And it was about $50 Canadian. So not that too pricey for a microphone. The main problem I had with this one is it's too sensitive. It would pick up the computer sound, the sound outside of the door. So I had to stop recording. I had to redo some takes because outside noise was more easy to get picked up by the microphone and that would kind of if you listen to some of my video you hear the kids screaming at the back which i mean it's normal in the fact that we're in covid and i'm at home and my kids are just the other side of that door i wanted to have one that was less sensitive so i don't pick up as much outside sound than the a close a bubble close to the microphone and the one i had was what they call an omni microphone. So when you talk about omni microphone, you talk about polar patterns. And I'm not sure everybody knows about that, but uh, each microphone is built for different reasons and with different targets, with different um, use if you want. And part of the design of the microphone, when, co when thing comes up is the polar pattern. The polar pattern is I would say kind of the space in front of or around the microphone where it's going to be most sensitive to actually capture the sound. So in the case of an Omni microphone, it, it is as much sensitive all around the microphone. Sound from the back of the microphone of the front on the side are almost the same volume. It's good because you want to put the microphone there and you want to be able to record two people talking or the environment and stuff like that. But when you want to isolate an instrument or a source like your voice from the computer noise or from the door or from somebody else walking in the street or from you're in the in, in the in a store and you're doing recording you don't want to get all the noise you will but you want them less and you want there you want more of your voice so you would need to look for a microphone that has what they call a polar pattern that is cardioid the cardioid is uh, mostly efficient in front of the microphone. So my microphone is here, so it's mostly sensitive here. And, and I'll show you how it works. So if I put it here, if I talk like this, so it's very sensitive in front of it. If I turn it like that, gradually you're on the side. So you hear less of the highs, more of the bass. And if I just turn and turn, now you hear a lot less, you know. So basically it means that if you're off axis, you hear less of the microphone and in, in you're in access to it. 
in front of it. It's going to be more efficient. So this is um, usually an instrument microphone so that you clip on an instrument. So I'm, gonna, I'm using it for a voice microphone. So the problem I have right now is it might be too far away. Uh, I, I might have bought a microphone that is so not sensitive that it needs to be physically here to be really doing his job. So if that's the case, I will probably buy some type of headset just to hold it in place. So because I like the sound of this, this is clean. And if I go like this, you don't hear that too much. Now you hear it. So the, the bubble of recording is really in front of it. So if my only problem is having it here, I don't think it's a big problem. I'm just gonna buy the headset to hold it here and everybody's going to be pretty happy to hear my voice clearly and uh, not hearing all the other noises in the room. So what you have in a package is, of course, the microphone, the pack itself with the battery section. On it, you have a switch. Now, this is on with no low-cut filter. And then the other one is the same thing, but with only uh, at a low-cut so you have high frequency. The low cut is cutting 8 dBs per octave under 80 hertz. So it's mostly for rumble, you know. And this microphone response is between 100 and 14,000. So pretty good for the voice because actually in my case, I'm going to really sing or talk higher than 16,000. Not my type of sound I can create easily with this voice. Um, but it is very capable of receiving loud volume. It can get to 123 dBs of sound pressure on it. So that's why it's made to be actually put close to a source like a violin or something like that. I'll, I'll test it more. I'll see what I can do with it. In worst case scenario, I might go into another preamp before going into the mixer or the sound card right now. I'm in testing mode and we'll see what we can get out of this thing. And that is test number two. 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 Test number two. Well, uh, my, my voice might sound bizarre now, but it sounds I think the volume is good. I'm actually using this as my... Sorry. Um, let's try the other. This is the direct sound, or... The normal sound. So, because my problem um, right away, this sounds a lot better than the one I had before. So, as a preamp for the microphone, this is much better. Oh, well, it's a vocoder box, so it's meant to be controlling a microphone. Probably has a much powerful and cleaner preamp on this thing than a mic preamp than the one I have on my little Go Mixer Roland, um, which is a portable device. So they're might be, of course, a lot more limits than this one that is a dedicated uh, vocoder box. Um, so it means that I have the volume here, the sensitivity of the gain, if you want, of the microphone. And uh, because this is useful for me, uh, I thought about selling it a couple of times. And I'll do another video about this and my hardware vocoders that I have here. One of the reasons that I still keep it is that my MX1 mixer doesn't have a microphone input at all. It's only line in and digital in. So if I want to plug a microphone into that one, I can use the USB of this one into the MX1, and then the MX1 has a microphone input using this. And I just need to bring down the effects. I just... And I just have the direct sound instead, and I have this. So now, I don't have the background noise. I don't have a hiss. It's very clean. And it's not in the way I can move my arm. It's not in front of my face. Uh, I get a much nicer sound. So you see how much of a difference the preamps makes. So with the Go Mixer, it was a good match with my affordable microphone. And that might be exactly what you want. So go for that mobile setup if you want to. But if you want a higher quality microphone, but then of course, the price is not the same. My microphone I have right now, Cardioid, is really aimed to listen to this part, but not here. 
and they're round. It doesn't take it too much. So you, you're not hearing the fan of my computer right now. You're not hearing the noise outside of the door. And, but you need a better preamp. In my case, I'm using this. And if I didn't have this, I would need to look for a, a, a um, sound card that has a better preamp than the one that I just played with in, the, in my portable interface. So I'm getting closer to a setup that I can be comfortable with. And this seems to be pretty cool for what I want to do. Cardioid microphone, phantom power in the box itself, then uh, XLR cable connected into my preamp. Actually, I could have just XLR to XLR because the back of this is a combo connector. So it could be XLR or quarter inch. And even there's phantom power. So I might not even need, I have to look at the manual, might not even need to use the battery in this if I use, maybe not, I'll have to check. That's it. I hope it helps you, you know, have a better understanding. That's it. Cheers, guys.